It is a criminal offence for the driver of an accessible scheduled coach service to refuse a wheelchair user access to an unoccupied wheelchair space, irrespective of whether the wheelchair user pre-booked the space. This is under the catchly named Public Service Vehicle Conduct of Drivers, Inspectors, Conductors and Passengers Amendment Regulations 2002, which says, and it's a bit about duties towards wheelchair users, if there is an unoccupied wheelchair space on the vehicle, a driver and a conductor shall allow a wheelchair user to board if the wheelchair is of a type that can be correctly and safely located in that wheelchair space, and in so doing, neither the maximum seating nor standing capacity of the vehicle would be exceeded. It says, for the purposes of paragraph 2, a wheelchair space is occupied if there is a wheelchair user in that space, or passengers or their effects are in that space, and they or their effects cannot readily and reasonably vacate it by moving to another part of the vehicle. The question comes, what happens if there are seats in the wheelchair space, as coaches tend to do? And when these regulations were being written back in 2001, the Department for Transport considered this. The person who drafted the regulations said that they'd given some consideration as to what to do if there are seats in the wheelchair space. They say, as for the coach issue, if the seats in the wheelchair space are occupied and those passengers cannot reasonably move, then the wheelchair space is occupied. If the operator decides to leave the seats there but unoccupied, or if passengers can vacate them, then he will have to remove the seats for a wheelchair user. Of course, if he uses a pre-booking system, he will know what to expect, but if he doesn't, then he must make the choice whether he wants the aggro at the roadside or to keep the space clear. That's pretty clear to me, and it's made a criminal offence to fail to do that under Section 24 of the Public Passenger Vehicles Act 1981, which talks about regulation of the conduct of drivers. And it says, if a person to whom regulations having effects by virtue of this section apply contravenes or fails to comply with any of the provisions of the regulations, he shall be liable on a summary conviction to a fine not exceeding level two on the standard scale. And in the case of offence by a person acting as a driver of a public service vehicle, the court by which he is convicted may, if it thinks fit, send notice of the particulars of the conviction to the Secretary of State, requiring the Secretary of State to endorse them on the person's driving record. So if a person fails to comply with their conduct regulations, then they can be taken to court, end up with a criminal record of £500 fine and an endorsement of their licence. And indeed, West Yorkshire Police confirmed to me by the Police Crime Commissioner that this is a crime. That bus drivers refusing access to wheelchair users is a summary only offence which can be enforced by the police. They have said that any reports of access issues would be logged and an inquiry conducted on the evidence available. The law requiring accessibility of coaches is actually the same law as was used in the first bus case as I won at Supreme Court, except it's even more clear. In first bus it was about whether somebody who was already occupying the wheelchair space, i.e. a baby, had to move so that I could use it. In the case of coaches, it's not about that, it's about whether unoccupied furniture in the wheelchair space has to move so that I can use the wheelchair space. And the legislation is entirely clear that the driver is required to make sure that it does. You may remember that I previously had some difficulties with National Express refusing me access without booking in advance because they claimed that it was too difficult for them to remove their seats at short notice. The thing is, under the Public Service Vehicle Accessibility Regulations, which talks about accessibility of buses and coaches, accessible vehicles have to have the obligation that in the case of a single deck or double deck coach, this may include a seat which may be quickly dismantled or removed, provided that the seat can be safely stowed. So every wheelchair accessible coach has that obligation that the seat can be dismantled or removed quickly. So there shouldn't be an issue with expecting the driver to remove the seats. National Express, after I contact them, they changed their guidelines. 
they've made it clear now that even if a wheelchair user doesn't book in advance, they are to be given access to the wheelchair space if at all possible. They have to do a few checks to check if the wheelchair is compatible. But ultimately, if you just turn up and want to travel, they will accommodate you. Similarly, Scottish CityLink, they changed their conditions of carriage after I challenged them. They said that they were going to change it so that it doesn't say that you must phone 36 hours in advance. And if there is room on any of our vehicles at any time, wheelchairs will be accepted for travel, whether booked or not. Now, in the same company group or closely associated with Scottish CityLink is Megabus. Now, Megabus, like National Express, use what's called the magic seat. The magic seat by NMI, as shown here, is specifically designed to be altered by drivers preparatory for a wheelchair user. It doesn't require any tools and it takes less than 90 seconds to do. Sadly, when I tried to catch Megabus yesterday, this is what happened. Good afternoon, CityLink and Megabus. Declan speaking, how can I help? Hello, I am wheelchair user hoping to travel on 1520 Leeds to Middlesbrough. Uh, please, can I travel on it? Uh, what day? Today. Today at 15.20. Uh, is it okay if I can just pop you in a hold and I'll double check with our control department? Yeah, that's okay. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks. Hi there, thank you so much for holding. Thank you. Uh, so I spoke with our Glasgow Control Department and they advised that we, would have, we wouldn't be able to get on the service because the coach has not been prepped. Yeah, the coach has to be prepped for wheelchair users and seats have to be taken out for them and we would, it states in the terms and conditions we need at least 48 hours notice. It is a criminal offence for a driver to refuse access to a wheelchair space, whether pre prepped or not. I am phoning the police now. My number is... That's SMS only. I am hanging up and phoning the police. Thank you for calling West Yorkshire Police. We are extremely busy at the moment. We will get to your call as soon as possible. What are their reasons for, for doing this, sir? They said it's because they must have advance notice to remove this... Yeah, their um, seats that are installed in the wheelchair space that I would have to occupy. So this bus is right here now, and it leaves in 15 minutes, but the company have told me point blank that I can't travel. I'm doing quite well with you on the phone, but just so you're aware, I've got hearing loss. I sometimes struggle in noisy environments and with call centres. I'm reluctant to challenge the driver directly because I don't want a breach of the peace. Well, that's understandable. OK, Douglas, your log reference number is 1028. Yeah. 1028 of today's date, brilliant. That's correct, sir, yeah. I've put it as a priority, you. so the next available unit will be attending, OK. If Thank you. Just make yourself known to police and we'll take it from there. Lovely. Prince Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You want this bus back? Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Some pretty good ticket. They told me they couldn't travel. Megabus this morning. Why is that? They said because you'd have to remove the seats from the real first place. Yeah. It's already been done. <laughs> I, I just, because they refused, I called the police. So the police are on the way. Because they refuse me travel, which is a criminal offence. Do you need to stay in the chair? I do, but do. I'm not getting on until the police have come. No, but the police are on the way because your guy said they can travel. I can't leave the bus here for five minutes. I appreciate that. Well, I've got its details and I've got the call recorded, so I'll just report the lead and they'll just have to pass it to you. Mm -hmm. so it's me. <laughs> You're not, the company did though. Yeah, because usually, if you see it hasn't been taken out, 
Yeah. We haven't got the facilities to do that. You're legally required to take it out there and then. Believe oh. me. Well, I'm telling you how it is. <laughs> that's All right. That's your that's problem and not mine, isn't it? If, if, if the seat's in the wheelchair space and I want to travel, then the driver is committing a criminal offence unless is they it? remove the seats there and then. Even though we haven't got facilities to do it. Yeah, you should leave them out if need be. Believe me, and your own company originally emailed me and said that you would take them out. tested the CityLink manager who had previously told me in email that wheelchair users could travel spontaneously. However, he just flat denied that customer services had refused me access to that bus. The police finally turned up. They had a good look round, had a chat with the vehicle operators, said precisely two syllables to me, and then left. Alright guys, service end is just dropping off, it's not going anywhere. I wonder what caused that delay. I'm sure. Coach will be about 15 minutes, there or thereabouts. I've just bought a Sheffield ticket. It's been a while since I left anyone speechless. At this point I decided that Megabus had already caused its other passengers enough delay and inconvenience, so I left. On the way out I wheeled past this Sheffield bus. The stand manager appeared to be having somewhat of an animated conversation with the driver about something, can't imagine what. This felt like a difficult and stressful thing to do, and I don't enjoy such. The thing is, I shouldn't have to. All I am asking is that Megabus enable wheelchair users to travel without having to book days in advance, just like non-wheelchair using passengers, just like other coach operators enable for wheelchair users, and just like the law tells them to. I don't think that's much to ask. Megabus, sort yourselves out. <laughs>